Good morning. It's an honour to be here in such distinguished company. Minister Muller, Mr Bill Gates, three years ago, you asked a group of researchers to answer two questions that would accelerate progress towards ending global hunger. The first question was this. What are the most effective ways to end hunger, increase the incomes of the poorest farmers, while at the same time protecting the environment? And the second question, what would it all cost? Your ambition was to support the United Nations Agenda 2030, and in particular, the second goal, zero hunger. It's an ambition that brings us all here today, and particularly in light of the alarming rise in hunger as a result of the economic fallout from COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Karen Smaller, and I'm here on behalf of Series 2030, Sustainable Solutions to End Hunger. We're a team of three partners, the International Food Policy Research Institute, Cornell University, and the International Institute for Sustainable Development. I'm here to present the results of the work of 84 researchers from 25 countries who read more than 100,000 articles and ran a model with over hundreds and thousands of equations to answer these two questions. We were guided by a board of 20 leading food and agriculture experts. And I'm also honored to be here with the Editor-in-Chief of Nature, Magdalena Skipper, who has been our partner and publisher. We believe that the best decisions are informed by evidence. We use the highest standards of research and combine them with cutting-edge digital tools. We used artificial intelligence to scan half a million articles from the past 20 years of agricultural development literature. And then we integrated the findings into a sophisticated economic model to estimate the costs. What did we do concretely? Well, we collected information about agricultural interventions that work and that are successfully being adopted by farmers in low- and middle-income countries. We group the findings in three big buckets. Let me help you visualize them with something a little less sophisticated. One, interventions on the farm to directly improve productivity and incomes. Two, investments in improvements for storage and services to help farmers move food to markets. And three, we discovered that if we want any of these to work, that we need to empower the excluded by ensuring every person's right to a decent education, a decent livelihood, and a political voice. Let me give you some more details. On the farm. On the farm. We found that small-scale producers successfully adopt new technologies, such as climate-resilient crops, but that they must be accompanied by sufficient training and extension services, particularly for women, and they must be both affordable and profitable. There's plenty of technology out there, but not enough attention to context 
and to how knowledge is best shared. We also know about the productivity gaps in agriculture. Let's take dairy in Africa, for example, where cows produce up to 20 times less milk than the cows do in Europe. Obvious and useful options to increase yields are being overlooked and understudied. Simple things like using the residues left over after crops are harvested as feed for cows to increase their milk production. Food on the move. Donor investments in better storages for cereals and grains are working to reduce losses after the harvest. But other interventions are also needed to improve handling and packaging and to reduce harvest losses for more nutritious foods like fruits and vegetables. There's also a need to look more closely at enterprises beyond the farm. We confirm the growing evidence that informal and small enterprises are successfully serving farmers across the global south, particularly in Africa. These enterprises are a powerful catalyst for technology adoption and improving incomes. The third finding is about the millions of hardworking people who are excluded from progress, particularly women. We had an important wake-up call when we looked at all the findings together. No matter what intervention we chose, they were most effective for people who already had some basic access to capital. Let me emphasize this point. The reality is that the poorest are only marginally helped by these interventions. They only start to improve their lives and the lives of their families when they themselves have a place to start. And this takes capital in all its forms, social capital, like networks and being members of farmers' organizations human capital, like education and vocational training, and financial capital, like access to credit and insurance. This minimum threshold matters. Only then do investments work to their full capacity. So now the big question, what will it cost? While the researchers were synthesizing the evidence, we were simultaneously building a sophisticated economic model to answer the question. And what we found is that donors need to spend an extra $14 billion from now until 2030. What this means is that donors need to double their current spending on food security and nutrition. It's underwhelming, right? This is how close we are. For an extra $11 per person in the industrialized world, we could bring a sustainable end to hunger within our reach. Our findings are shared and confirmed by a complementary study by the Center for Development Research and the FAO which will be presented later today. And this is why we, as the research community, are jointly calling on donors to double their efforts to end hunger sustainably. Let's briefly go back to our buckets to see where the 14 billion needs to go. A significant level of support is still needed on the farm, particularly in Africa, despite years of attention from donors and philanthropists. 
The investment is working, but it's not enough. We found that donors need to target nine out of the 14 billion on the farm, two billion to move food to markets, and three billion on social protection to help empower the excluded. And of course, the governments of low and middle income countries also need to make contributions. We estimate that they need to provide an additional $19 billion per year from now until 2030 by mobilizing domestic resources. If donors and governments make this modest effort, the gains will be tremendous. It would remove almost 500 million people from the daily experience of hunger, double the incomes of 545 million small-scale producers, and keep greenhouse gas emissions in agriculture below the target set in the Paris Climate Agreement. Importantly, the public spending would also generate an extra $52 billion in private investment per year in the agriculture and food sectors. Minister Muller, Mr. Bill Gates, today we hand over to you our answers and join forces with the research community in a call to action to all donors to double aid to food security and nutrition. Thank you.